All right, uh, looking at the next example, as you can see, you're in trouble because I've moved the objective, so I have more room down here to write. It's going to be a little bit of a longer one. Uh, we are kind of, the last couple examples weren't too bad. We're going to kind of get into a little bit of some more difficult type stuff in the next two, so we'll see if we can't figure it out. If you follow these rules, I'm sure it won't be a problem. Uh, this problem becomes a little bit difficult for us because now we've got multiple exponential expressions and we also have different bases. So normally what I've been doing is I would just take log base 5 of both sides to get rid of this, but log base 5 won't get rid of 4 to some power. And if I took log base 4 of both sides, it'll get rid of this, but it won't get rid of that. So we have a little bit of an issue here. And it would be great, you know, the last problem we did with like this was we were able to write this as a base uh, of like 2 to some power will give us 5, and then 2 to some power will give us 4. Well, neither of those uh, would be allow would allow us to write both of these as a common base with a rational exponent. So we have to basically explore another option. Now what I'm going to do is instead of uh, taking log base 5 or log base 4, I'm going to use a base other than those that you know, won't cancel anything, but it will allow me to type it in the calculator. And those two that I can use are the common logarithm or the natural logarithm. I'm going to use the natural logarithm uh, for the reason that it's only two letters, so it's less writing for me, and therefore uh, both will give me the same answer. Now, as, as you see here, I have the natural log of 5 to the x minus 2 power is equal to the natural log of 4 to the 2x plus 3 power. Now, neither of these will, will cancel because this is a base of e and that's 5. Uh, this is a base of e and that's 4. So we can't cancel anything out, but we can use the power rule. And what the power rule says is we can take our exponent and write it as a coefficient of our logarithm. And we're going to do that on both sides. So I'm going to take this exponent and write it as the coefficient of this logarithm. Okay, now uh, the reason that helped us a little bit is because now we have our variable out of our exponent. So that's going to help us a lot because we can't solve for our variable when it's in an exponent. So now what we're going to do, normally what we would do, if the natural log weren't there, we would just distribute the 5. Okay, And what we don't like about this problem is there's multiple variables. So we're going to try to remedy that. But first I'm going to go ahead and distribute. So I'll get x natural log of 5 minus 2 natural log of 5. Over here I'm going to distribute this to both. So I'll get 2x natural log of 4 and then plus 3 natural log of 4. So my next step is, you know, my issue that I have in this problem is I have multiple variables and they're on different sides of the equation. Now unfortunately those are kind of package deals. So I'm going to try to move them to the same side. So I'll subtract 2x natural log of 4. I can't break that up and just subtract 2x. So I have to move them both. So that will cancel, which is good. And just like we would do in any other problem, is if when you get your variables on the same side, you want to move everything else to the other side. So I'll add to natural log of 5 here, and add to natural log of 5 here. So this will cancel. Over here I'm with x, left with this. equals 3 natural log of 4 plus 2 natural log of 5. Now it wouldn't have mattered if I moved this over to this side and this over to this side. It will still give me the, the same answer in the long run, but I just chose to do it that way. So now my dilemma is I've got multiple variables. And we've dealt with this before, so what we're going to need to do is to actually factor out that common term. So I'm going to factor out an x. That basically means I'm going to take each one of these and divide it by x. So when I divide this by x, I get the natural log of 5. When I divide this by x, I get negative 2 natural log of 4. This other stuff will stay the same. And then next, to get x by itself, what I'll do is I'll divide both sides by this stuff. As you can see, this problem's going to take up a little bit of room, but I promise it will be worth getting the answer. All right, now uh, this stuff is going to cancel over here, so it's going to leave me x. And then this 
is what I'm going to use to figure out what my answer is. So I'm going to go ahead and type this into my calculator. So here's my calculator. Let's see if I can't turn it on. All right. So now what I'm I'm kind of old school. So I don't try to type this whole thing uh, in my nice little uh, in one line of text. So I'm just going to go ahead and type in my denominator first. Believe it or not, minus two natural log of four. Okay, so that should be what my denominator is. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide it into my numerator. So I'm going to type in 3 natural log of 4 plus 2. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and close my... Uh, it probably wouldn't matter, but I'm going to go ahead and close my parentheses. Natural log of 5. Now, if I typed this in, if I hit second answer and type this in, uh, this would actually give me the wrong answer. And the reason is, is because what the calculator sees, it says this plus this divided by this. And the calculator does order of operations. So it would, I would take this and divide it by this first and then add that to it. So to be able to get this right, what I actually have to do is I have to insert another parentheses. Because I want it to divide into the sum of those two things, not just, uh, yeah, that one that comes right before it. So now when I hit enter, I get x to be negative 6 decimal 3, 4, 3. So let's see if I can't remember that. Uh, negative 6 decimal 3, 4, 3. So again, what we're trying to do is we have unlike bases. So you can either take the common log or the natural log. Use the power rule. Distribute. Get your variables on the same side. Everything else on the other. Factor out your x and then that will allow you to solve for x.